Alright, we're gonna do our, um, our service today, uh, Bible study service, and uh, let's start off in prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for all your blessings for us that you give us, your spiritual blessings, most of all, that Jesus came for us so we can be forgiven our sins and so we can have everlasting life. And that all that he taught us through the New Testament and that we can be disciples with you and the truth will set us free. And uh, I pray all these things in the name of Jesus, as the Bible says, ask for anything in the name of Jesus and I will give it to you. And I ask that you give us the cure for Corona and that you help us with the rioting and help people to become believers in you to realize that Jesus gave us peace and that we can have peace through, through Jesus and through your work. And I say again, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so I guess uh, we covered chapter 1 and 2 of John, and then I was going to go into 3 tonight. So, I'll just go back and look at a couple of things that were chapter 1. Um, one of the things I just want to repeat, it says, In Him was life, this is John chapter 1, 4. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And in John 1, 12, he says, But to all who receive him, which means Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And then on the uh, same 117 it says for the law was given through Moses grace and truth came through Jesus Christ so grace and truth come from Jesus Christ and then near the end of uh, chapter 1 it says and that's 51 and he said to him truly truly I say to you you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And uh, let's see, chapter 2, uh, what should I bring up? Well, there's the part about, and Jesus said to his mother, O oh woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And I, I did some research on that. Um, my hour has not yet come. It definitely sounds, seems to be his hour to where he's going to be sacrificing himself for us. And when he says, oh woman, what have you done? What have you to do with me? Some other things that I researched and said, the phrase woman is also used for Eve. So we'll just reserve that one for now and we'll keep meditating on that. If you have any comments about that I'd like to hear about that I don't want to mislead anybody so I'm going to just leave it at that for now um, another important thing is Jesus said to he said destroy the, this temple and in three days I will raise it up and of course he's talking about after he's been crucified and he will rise again it says here but he spoke of the temple of his body and then this other part which was kind of interesting he said um, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did but Jesus did not trust himself to them which I'm wondering why if they believed in him why didn't he trust himself into them but then he says because 
He knew all men and needed no one to bear witness of man, for he himself knew what was in man. So I think, like I said, you know, you have to be careful with all people because um, we're people. That's just it. So maybe that's what that means. Anyways, let's go into chapter 3. I'll just start reading it and, and we'll go from there. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So see here it says that this is a, a really, you know, power, a man with power, Nicodemus, and he's a ruler and he's coming to Jesus at night, which through my other Bible study, uh, we talked about that he didn't want others to see him going to Jesus. And then he also said to Jesus, we know that you are a teacher from God. So they, they knew this. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of God, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you see how he says here, that which is born of water and the spirit and we'll find out later on you know more about um, the water and the spirit but let's remember what he said there because that's he's, he's making a statement here and this statement is uh, a true statement do not marvel what I I said to you, you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know whence it comes, or whether it goes. Think about it. Sit down outside. Just listen to the wind, feel the wind. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can this be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand this? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can, I, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things. No one has descended into heaven but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent to the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So that's the first step there, just to, you know, believing in Jesus. That's, when you do that, you'll have everlasting life. Just believe. Believe that he's the Son of God. Is that so hard to do? So, well, you know, it depends on which way the wind's blowing with you. So we'll see what happens as we go on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world. So it says it right there, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through it. So Jesus doesn't come to condemn. And if you want to be like Jesus, then you don't condemn people. It's not about 
making people feel bad or guilty what they do. It's about lifting them up. Jesus always said, and you'll hear later on, he would tell them, your sins have been forgiven. And that's, you know, that's what we do as Christians. We help people try to lift them up. So anyways, he goes on to say in the verse 18, he who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Think about it. The only Son of God, Jesus, came to earth for us. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. And you can see that around nowadays how for some reason people like to destroy things. I mean, is that really oddly? You know, that doesn't come from God. That's, you know, that's coming from the wrong place. That, and this is the judgment. Wait, let me see. For everyone who does, does evil hates the light and does not come to the light. At least this deed should be exposed. So, but you can. If people that are doing wrong, that's what Jesus came for, the forgiveness of sin. So, you know, if you're doing wrong or, you know, you can, you can, you can find God just like Paul did. You can, Jesus will come to you if you want that. But he who does what is true comes to the light that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been weighing wrought in God so if you are a Christian you need to come to the light and shine your light for others after this Jesus will I'm just making a recommendation I, I'm no, I can't tell you what to do or it's a recommendation you know, go out there and shine the light after this, Jesus and his disciples went into the land of Judah, where there he remained and with them and, and baptized. So they were baptizing in Judah. John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem, because there was much water there. And people came and were baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. So they're baptizing and this is part of the, what we're supposed to do. Um, okay. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the land of Judah. There he remained with them and baptized. John also was baptizing. So you have Jesus and had John doing some baptizing in other places. Now, a decision arose between John, disciples, and, the, and a Jew over a pur purifying discussion, not a decision. <laughs> a discussion arose between John's disciples and a Jew over pur purifying, and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you bore witness, here he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, no one can receive anything except what is given him from heaven. So he's just basically saying that that's okay. That's what God wants. God wants people to go to, to Jesus to be baptized. And then he says, you yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now full. He must increase, but I must decrease. So, you know, this is basically saying that John came here for to prepare the way for Jesus. And this is how we are as disciples. Sometimes, you know, we need to we're preparing the way for other disciples. So uh, this is this is the kind of what we're supposed to do. Now in 31 he comes with he comes from above. Uh, he he's, he continues to say, he who comes from above is above all. 
he who is of the earth belongs to the earth. So, you know, the way the earth is, it's a beautiful earth, we have a beautiful earth, but some of the things that people do in this earth, you know, they spend their whole lives trying to make money or trying to buy certain things or they fill their lives with things to do to try to find happiness, you know, the worldly things. But he who comes from above is above all. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. For some reason, people don't want to hear about God and the, how to, you know, make, make a better life for themselves. I, I'm not sure what it is, but um, we'll figure that out eventually. So he who receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. That's the first thing. Set your seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God. For it is not my measure that he gives the Spirit. I'm getting a little bit off track here. Let me start from this 34. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God. For it is not my measure that he gives the Spirit. The Father loves the Son, and He has given all things into His hand. He who believes in the Son, that's Jesus, has eternal life. He who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God rests upon him. And a few times in this chapter 3, they kind of repeated the same thing, basically. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of the God rests upon him. So that's uh, chapter 3. And um, we'll do the same thing next week. It seems like we're doing this every week. I thought we would try to do it every day. If I'd like to do that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, this is close in prayer. O oh Lord God. Uh, let these words sink into our heart and to, our, and to help us to be good disciples and to, to love you and to praise you and always want to do your will. It's such an easy life to be with you, Lord God. It is sometimes we have to carry your cross. There's challenges, but there's so much joy in knowing your son and being good disciples and doing your will and so much joy in knowing the truth the truth will set you free I pray in the name of Jesus Amen see you next time just remember do what Jesus told you to do and you'll be okay